Hello, welcome to another vlog. I am kind of excited about this one and I hope it, I'll try and keep it from being too dry. I know I can get a little technical sometimes, so I'll do my best. We are heading into Pride Month. I'm very excited and I have a few things uh, planned for it, which I haven't done in the past, so I'm excited to, to uh, spread the love. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about something because for whatever silly reason, a lot of people are getting up in arms about something that it should be nothing, <laughs> okay? And we are talking today about pronouns. Now, I actually was an English teacher for several years. I am certified to teach English as a foreign language. And uh, so I feel qualified <laughs> to teach those who don't understand English grammar or who um, couldn't tell you what exactly a pronoun is. I am happy to share with you what that is. Even the native speakers don't necessarily know this information, so I am happy to share it with you. So, let's get started. Um, first of all, a pronoun is something that refers to a noun. So, a pronoun is anything that refers to a noun. We usually think of these as certain words that we use to point to something. We'll start, we, and we use the terms Singular and plural, you should know those. Singular meaning one person, and plural meaning many. And we also use, the. there are three different forms. There's first person, second person, and third person. A first person pronoun is one that includes yourself, so me. I is a first person pronoun. We is a plural first person pronoun. So something that includes the one speaking, okay? Second person is the person you are addressing. So I'm talking to you, that is second person, okay? Third person is when you're, you are referring to a person that is not the one you are addressing. So I'm talking to you, but I am talking about him, her, he, he, she, it, they, them, etc. So, so let's go over the basic pronouns. I'm going to try and put up some graphics here to make it more visual because I can't do that without just hand gestures. So. So singular first person, I. Now this form of the pronoun is the subject form of the pronoun. So whoever is doing the, um, the verb, whatever action it is. So in this case it's I. I am doing the action. So I go, I do, I see, I play, I work. Yeah. So I am the one doing the action. If it's, if it's plural, then it's we. We go, we play, we work, we do. And I think you should know how that works. Second person. I want to quickly mention that second person has changed over time. And so some people don't know this, but back in the day, I'm talking like 17th century and earlier. Um, that English used to have a U, form of U, that was informal, but we've dropped it. After about the 17th century-ish, it just completely fell away from our vocabulary. But it used to have one. So that was thou. I know, mind blown. <laughs> If you've ever read it in the Bible, the King James Version was translated before it was dropped. So that's why it is included in the Bible so people associate it today with biblical things. But it used to be a very common word that people would use. So in old uh, texts, you might still find it. Thou, thou hast done something, whatever. Thou doest, it has an ST at the end. And then the formal U, or the U plural, is you, 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 um, you go, you do, you play, um, whatever it might be. Now, let's get to the interesting ones. Third person. <laughs> so, third person, singular, is known as he, she, it. He, she, it. Yeah? You still with me? So, he, referring to male, she, referring to female, and it, referring to objects. I'm going to reiterate that. He, referring to male. She, referring to female. It, referring to objects. Now I'd also like to include in he and she, those who present 
as a certain gender and who prefer those pronouns. So he, being the male pronoun, I will continue to say male and not man or whatever because it's not a man, it's a thing. <laughs> so I'm having trouble using that uh, form. Because uh, man is a noun and not an adjective. So male, however, is an adjective and that's why I'm using it. So please don't get up in arms about that. So male pronoun he. Yeah? He goes, he does, he plays, he works. Yeah? She. She goes, she does, she plays, she works. With uh, it. Now, it can sometimes be used for animals. If you don't know the gender of the animal, you can use a gendered pronoun for an animal, but you don't have to. So, things can sometimes do things. But I like to think of it as a robot. <laughs> and it is an object or an animal. So, it goes. It does. It plays, it sees, things like that. Um, so my robot does <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's also a plural form, they. They go, they do, they work, they play. Yeah? So I think that everybody knows those. I mean, I feel like most people who speak English do know those. And uh, I'd like to move on to object pronouns. Okay? So object pronouns are when you receive the action of the verb. So, for example, give that to me. Me. Yeah? And uh, me is the first person singular object pronoun. Me. Um, to me, for me, about me. Yeah? Talk about me. And then... The plural form is us. Talk for us, to us, about us. It's also almost universally used after prepositions. So any preposition like to, for, about, under, of, of for, I already said for. Um, anyway, you get the idea. And so the, you want to do the thou form? <laughs> thou form is the, okay? For the, about the, of the. Um, so, in case you ever wondered what the difference is between thou and thee, thou is the subject form, like I is the subject form, and thee is the object form, like me is the object form. So, thou, thee. So, then we go to you, which is plural or formal, and it was you, you. You doesn't change. For you, to you, about you, yeah, under you above you, whatever you may want to say. And then you go to he, she, it. Well, it's not he, she, it because it is object forms. So we're talking about him, for him, about him, under him, through him, whatever it may be. And her, for her, to her, about her. Yeah? And it. It does not change about it, through it, for it, to it, yeah? And then the plural, third person plural, them, them, about them, to them, for them, yeah? So I hope that was clear. There's also a possessive. Um, it could, it, for example, my, this is my phone, it belongs to me, yeah? So my being the possessive form, my, and for us it's our, yeah, for thou, thee, it is, it is thine, and for you, it is your, and then he, it is his, she, it is her, and it, it is its, and then for they, it is there, okay, T-H-E-I-R, there, that's that particular spelling of there. So, I hope that made sense to you, um, but I'm not finished yet. The thing is that when we were learning to teach English as a foreign language, we learned something very special about 
language in general, and that is that there are two different ways to teach a language. There is a way to teach like the formal, this is how the language should be, and then there is a way of teaching, this is how the language is. This is what people actually say. So depending on what school you were from, <laughs> you might have learned one or the other. Now, in schools where English is your native language, most teachers will teach, this is the way language should be. I put that in air quotes because I don't necessarily agree with how it should be. That's not how people speak all the time. So there is a difference between speaking incorrectly and getting it wrong or speaking in a vernacular in, in a way that people generally accept as correct and it's just the grammarians who are saying that it's wrong. So there's the question. Which side are you on? Yeah, I personally am on the side of if it is accepted as correct in our language and is used on an everyday basis, then I am fine with teaching it as a correct way to speak. And if it is something that is very very far away from correct speech, then I would say, no, don't teach that. But in this case, I think it's important because there is a phenomenon that we use in English all the time. Native speakers, I'll be willing to bet, but almost everyone has done this. And yet, it is not very often taught in schools. As I mentioned, in school, they mostly teach how language should be. The ideal, the correct way to do it. And they don't always teach the vernacular, the words that people use in certain ways, even though it's not taught in schools. So you probably will have a hard time finding this in a grammar book. But I'm going to teach you something that is something we use every day. And I sincerely hope it gets added to grammar books because I think it's disrespectful to call a human being it. I don't care who you are, if anyone calls you it, that's disrespectful, unless you ask them to, I guess. But so, so what's our alternative if someone doesn't feel comfortable being labeled as he or she? Well, there is an alternative. In fact, I have a funny quick story for you, is when I was in college, I shared an office with a bunch of international students. And one day, um, I sat next to the phone. There was one phone for the entire office. There, were, I think there was eight of us in there. And I sat closest to the phone. So I answered the phone more often than other people. So one day, I answered the phone. And it was for a, um, an international colleague of mine from somewhere in Asia. I'm not going to mention where. Just to let you know that his uh, English was his second language. So I answered the phone for him, I took a message, and then when he came back from class, I told him, um, this, uh, the dentist called and they asked if they can change your appointment to another day. And he said, how many people called? And I said, just one. I said, why did you say they? <laughs> and I had to explain for the first time that in English, we use they to describe a person whose gender is either ambiguous or unimportant to the story. In this case, it was unimportant to his appointment. And so I automatically used they to describe the person who called. I could have been more specific and said the woman who called and she said and etc. But it wasn't important because it was about the appointment and not about the speaker. And I felt like that would actually detract from the information I was trying to tell him. And as such, this is something we do all the time. English speakers do this all the time. Oh, look, somebody dropped their wallet. There is plural, isn't it? Well, why did you say there? Because I don't know the gender of the person who dropped it. <laughs> And even though we are taught in school to use his or her, we are taught in school um, to or to just use the male, just use his. I was taught that in school, so I'm sure somebody else was too. 
And um, that's a very sexist language. I would love for us to move away from that. And I think we are moving away from that by using they, them. <laughs> so if somebody wants to, they, anyone to use they, them pronouns, then I don't understand what's wrong with that. It's not that big a deal. It's not that complicated. It's not that scary. They just want to be referred to as they. That's all. So that's the end of my rant, and I hope you learned something today. I actually really love teaching grammar. It's one of my favorite points to teach. Um, it's much more fun than vocabulary, because that's basically a list of words to memorize. But grammar is like, show me the formula. Make it work. <laughs> so um, if ever you have any grammar questions, please leave them down below, or any other thing you would like me to talk about. And I'll see you in the next video.